I don't often use names and titles for messages, perhaps I should. I, I'm, I'm just, maybe I just don't consider myself creative enough on that, but I did come up with a name or a title for, for this message for those of you who are, who are taking notes. For those of you who are taking notes, the, the title of this message is The Lame and the Name. The Lame and the Name. Uh, and I'm going to be using the text from Acts, the third chapter, uh, various uh, verses from that, that whole chapter. The, the, the scripture reading itself, I believe, began in, in uh, verse 13 or, or uh, someplace, uh, maybe 11 or whatever. But uh, we'll be sharing some thoughts from there. But let's look to the Lord in a word of prayer. Our gracious and loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, dear Lord, for your resurrection. We thank you for uh, your meeting with the disciples where, where this whole story began. Father, as they were slow to understand, but Lord, that they came, uh, came to the complete understanding and, and realization in their hearts. So that they themselves became the, 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 the messengers. But Father, we also know that there's another angle to this, and that is those who, who made the big mistake of sending you to the cross and asking that a murderer be released unto, unto them. Lord, we, we pray, O oh God, that, that you might open our minds and understanding so that we might be able to relate to, to every part of the story. In Jesus' name, amen. As was read in the Gospel text from Luke, the uh, 24th chapter, uh, we see in the end of that Gospel text the prophetic statement of our Lord. Maybe you caught that, maybe you didn't. <clears throat> in, uh, uh, as after the story, a part about which Jesus or Judy shared, um, they gave him a piece of broiled, broiled fish <coughs> and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate it in, in their presence. But you skip down to verse 46, and he says, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day, and repent, and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And perhaps nobody realized, even Peter and James and John, or Peter and John specifically, how quickly that that scripture would be fulfilled. Because in, in Acts chapter 3, one of my favorite passages, we have the account, which we'll get into. But I want to ask you a question here. Have you ever made, ever made a mistake? Ever made a mistake? A big one. A big mistake. Perhaps something that, that maybe... Maybe people knew about, maybe they didn't. Maybe it was something that was, uh, I don't know, when you think about a mistake, maybe it was uh, in the legal system, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it was just something that you just absolutely are in horror to think about. A big mistake. And that's what we have, and that's what this text is about for many of the people. Uh, in this in this story in, in Acts chapter three, in 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 Luke chapter twenty three, we see the big mistake that that I'm referring to here, and it says it says. Now when Herod saw Jesus, he was exceedingly glad, for he desired for a long time to see him because he had. He had uh, heard many things about him. Then he questioned him with many words, but he answered him nothing. And the chief priests and the scribes stood vehemently accusing him. And then we skip down to verse 18, and they all cried out at once, saying, Away with this man, and release to us Barabbas, who had been thrown into prison for a certain rebellion made in, in the city for murder. <coughs> Pilate, therefore, wishing to release Jesus again called out to him, but they shouted, Crucify him, crucify him. And then he said to them the third time, Why, what evil has he done? I have found no reason for death in him. I will therefore chastise him and let him go. But they were insistent, 
demanding with loud voices that he be crucified, the voices of these men and the chief priests prevail. The scripture tells us out of Luke chapter 23. That is the big mistake that I believe that we're looking at here. And as we think back to your own lives, Grant, maybe you, maybe you didn't need much time to think about that big mistake that, that, that pops into your head. One of the things that we do is, number one, is we don't want to forgive ourselves. When we've committed that big mistake, that horrible memory in the back of our mind, a second thing is that we force ourselves to pay. Maybe you punish yourself for something that you've done. And then a third thing we do is we self-stigmatize ourselves. And, and, we, and, and all of these things add up so that, so that we can, we can uh, somehow atone for that, for that big, terrible mistake. The people in this post-resurrection text has, have made a serious mistake and, and, and were brought face to face with grace. I want to tell you this morning that if you've made a serious mistake of one form or another in your life, that mistake does not have to define you, particularly in view of the gospel. Because not long afterwards, you can say that, that as Peter and John went up to the temple, they this crowd was also with them in the temple. And the story, the witnesses of this day of God's grace, preached to them by the, by the mouth of Peter, the one who denied his Lord himself. It all starts with an incidental practice of obedience by the disciples in verse 1. Now Peter and John went up to the temple at the hour of prayer, at the ninth hour, to pray. And in verse 2, it says, a certain man, lame from his mother's womb, was carried, whom they laid daily at the gate of the temple, which is called Beautiful, to ask alms of those who entered the temple, who, seeing Peter and John about to go into the temple, asked for alms, and fixing his eyes on him, with John, Peter said, look at us! And so this man, this lame man, looked, diverted his attention to Peter and John, and Peter said the words that, that we know so well, silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. All of the elements of the story today begin with an incidental practice of obedience by, by God's people. That incidental practice of obedience, you can fit into God's plan. And you can be an instrument of bringing grace and forgiveness to somebody who so desperately needs it. Maybe you don't deserve it. Maybe these people in our text did not deserve it. We, we, we haven't even been introduced to these people yet in Acts, or in Acts chapter 3. So far, we have three players. We have Peter and James. Or Peter and John, and then we also have this lame man. And, and, and instantaneously, as, as Peter and, and James, perhaps uh, rather incidentally, and in a very brief time, <laughs> performed this miracle as, as, as this man, as, as they encountered one another. And this day began for, for, for this man, and for the disciples just like any other, and as this day began for you like any other. That's what we find in, in the Bible. You see, many people in the Bible had made serious mistakes in their life. You think of Abraham. Abraham had a problem with telling the truth. He was a liar. Abraham told several lies. Moses, of course, he had trouble with his temper. And he struck the rock in, in, the, in, the, in front of the congregation instead of speaking to it. David, of course, we know his, his, the nature of his mistake. Unfortunately, the tragedy that took place. 
as he succumbed to temptation. And Peter himself was also guilty of a mistake as at, the, at, the, at Calvary, the night before Jesus was put on the cross, as he denied his Lord not once, not twice, but three times. And then, of course, Paul, the Apostle Paul, uh, had to live with the fact that he persecuted and killed his fellow Christians prior to his conversion. Well, so we have this, this life-changing moment in, these, in, in, the, in the life of this lame man and in the amazing repercussions. And now let's add the third element, the third group of people here, which is the crowd. And this, I submit to you, is the same crowd that spoke to Pilate only a few days earlier. The people ran together amazed, it says, in, in the text here in verse 12, I believe it is. Verse 12, or verse 11, Now as a lame man who was, he, was, was healed held out of Peter and John, all the people ran together to them in the porch, which is called Solomon's. And the scripture says they were greatly amazed. The people ran together absolutely amazed. Those gathered were perhaps, to those gathered there, perhaps they thought that they were spectators. But the reality is, is that they were not the spectators. They were the ones that, that this whole unfolding story was, was there to benefit and the fulfillment of the words of our Lord in Acts 24 really came to fruition. Jesus said that, that, uh, that, that the gospel will be preached and that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations beginning at Jerusalem. And Peter is fulfilling that right here before our very eyes. This is great for the lame man, but but not for me, but it's not for me, you might think. Peter responds to the crowds, first of all, his own journey. Peter, Peter, as I said, had, had, had made some serious mistakes in his own life. But we see in verse 12 the sermon that Peter preaches. So when Peter saw it, he responded to the people, Men of Israel, why do you marvel at this, or why do you look intently at us, as though by our own power or godliness we made this man walk? The God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of our fathers, glorified his servant Jesus, whom you delivered up and denied in the presence of Pilate, when he was determined to let him go. But you denied the Holy One and the just, and asked for a murderer to be granted to you. And here the other shoe is falling upon this crowd. They are coming to realize that they are the very same crowd that stood before Pilate and demanded that Jesus be sent to the cross. They also demanded that a murderer be released unto them. You see, this is the crowd that made that serious mistake just a few days prior. And this is why we want to talk about, about that mistake, the big one that perhaps you have made Perhaps I have made, I have made several mistakes in my life that I, that I shudder to look back upon. And you perhaps have the same, same memories of, of something that has taken place. You might have a difficult time for forgiving yourself. You might want to force yourself to pay in one form or another. You might be punishing yourself in one way or another. I know that, 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 that when there's various, various things that take place in, in families and, and with individuals that they even tend to punish other people for things that have happened to them. Well, Peter is laying down the, the, the hammer upon these people and he says that, he, he uses that personal pronoun, but you deny the Holy One and the just. And you see, we find out Acts chapter 3 is really not about the lame man at all. For he's already out of the picture. 
Acts chapter 3 is not about necessarily Peter's mistakes, but it's about the crowd, the same crowd that stood in the presence of Pilate and demanded Jesus to be killed, and now Peter is pointing his finger at them. And he's giving them good news. And he says, in spite of the fact that you asked for a murderer to be granted unto you, and that you killed the Prince of Life whom God raised from the dead, of which we all are witnesses, that you too can be forgiven. And he says in verse 19, Repent therefore and be converted that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. Lastly, we see the people were called to repent in verse 19. And in chapter 4, verse 4, look at that in your Bible. However, many of those who heard the word believed, and the number of men came to be about 5,000 people. 5,000 people that were gathered around because of this, because of this, this incidental practice of obedience. Because of this, the fact that Peter and John got up that morning and went to the temple to pray, and because of the fact that they not only went to the temple, but they decided to look this layman in the eye, all of these other things unfolded, and 5,000 people came to repentance. 5,000 people that had made a big, serious mistake in their life that would have been defining completely. That mistake would have defined their existence, but they came to repentance. And as a result of this sermon, this, this action, and, and what took place on this day, this, all, of, all of this was, was unplanned. Peter and John were arrested for the first time. They were taken into custody, it says, in chapter 4, verse 1. And then verse 4 is a however of our text. Chapter 4, verse 4, however, many of those who heard the word believed. And that's where the number 5,000 comes in. Think of it, 5,000 people. They overcame what they knew in their hearts was evil and wrong. Perhaps they had lived and realized that they had made that decision and put Jesus the innocent one on the cross. Maybe that's in your heart, in your life too, that you realize that something that you've done has put Jesus on the cross. You demanded a murderer to be released unto you, and you had made that same mistake by denying the Lord. And Peter is there as, as, as one who has received forgiveness himself, preached the wonderful gospel to this people, that in his name and through faith in his name, he made this man strong. And yes, the faith that comes through him has given him this perfect soundness in all of the presence to you all. You too, like Peter and the crowd, need to accept the forgiveness. You need to forgive yourself. And that's why we need public repentance. One of the reasons is to let yourself off the hook. Maybe you need to let yourself off the hook today through public repentance and coming to, as this crowd came to realize, that the cross was for them. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your work. We thank you, O oh God, that you, would, that you would speak to this group that in spite of the fact that they demanded that you be hung on the cross, that they themselves were the first ones to hear the gospel and to sense and to experience the fulfillment of your prophetic word that, that, your, that, the message, that this message would, would be preached beginning in Jerusalem and continue throughout the entire world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.